Hello, in this video uh, we're going to start talking about the current divider principle first before uh, beginning solving examples. This current divider principle it's a, it's a very easy and simple tool that is helpful to find uh, currents uh, flowing through two resistors in parallel. Let's say we have two resistors like this in parallel and let's say the total current flowing is I so we have R1 in parallel with R2 and we are interested in finding um, each individual current flowing through R1 and R2 I2 flowing through R2 and I1 flowing through R1 so the, the current divider principle basically says that we can find I1 in terms of the resistors and the total current I and we do it this way. We take the total current I and multiply by R2 and divide by the summation of R1 plus R2 and that's it. Similarly for um, I2 we take I multiply by the other resistor R1 and then divide by R1 plus R2. We're gonna uh, take a look at the proof of this you can check chapter 8 of your textbook now the condition is that R1 and R2 must be in parallel if that's the case then we can use the current divider principle otherwise it doesn't apply okay now let's take a look at the first example let's say we have a current source providing 0.8 amps and this current source is connected to one resistor and then we have another two resistors like this so this resistor is 5 ohms this one is 15 ohms and here we have 10 ohms and we want to know the total resistance in the circuit are equivalent all the currents in the circuit meaning I10, I5, and I15 so the current flowing through each resistor and the power provided by the source so we start with our equivalent in this case it's simple because we can see that 5 and 15 they are in parallel and the equivalent of those two is going to be in series with 10 so we say our equivalent is 5 in parallel with 15 and then the equivalent is going to be in series with 10 so we add 10 when we apply the formula for two resistors in parallel 5 and 15 we get 3.75 ohms that's the equivalent of 5 and 15 in parallel then we add 10 and we get 13.75 ohms so now we have just uh, the equivalent circuit would be one with one source 0.8 amps and the equivalent resistance 13.75 ohms now we want to find the currents in the circuit I10 is the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor I5 is the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor and I15 the current flowing through the 15 ohm resistor for I10 is simple uh, because the same current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor is the same current uh, provided by the source so I10 is just 0.8 amps because the 10 ohm resistor is directly connected to the source but now we're looking for I5 and I15 and what we're going to use here is since 5 and 15 are in parallel and we know the total current entering the combination of them I10 we can apply the current divider principle so we take I5 is going to be the total current I10 times 15 and we divide this by the summation 15 plus 5 to get Point six ohms. 
Similarly, we can apply the same principle again in order to find I15. We take the total current I10, we multiply by the other resistor, in this case 5, and we divide by the summation of them, and we get 0.2. Now you can check your result with Kirchhoff current law. So we know this is right because if we add I5 plus I15, we must get I10. 0.6 plus 0.2 is going to give us I10, which is 0.8 amps. And finally, the power provided by the source. In order to find that, we can just use the final equivalent circuit that we get because the power provided by the source is the same power dissipated by our equivalent. And in this case it's very simple because the total current flowing through our equivalent is 0.8 amps so we take that as square and multiply it by the R equivalent and we get 8.8. Now this is equivalent of computing the, uh, the power dissipated by each resistor, PR1, and then adding PR2, and then adding PR3. So that's a different way of doing it. Now let's consider the second example, a bigger circuit. Let's say we have 3 ohms here, 15 ohm here, 5 ohm here, then this resistor is 20, and then we have 10 ohms here. So we're interested in finding the total resistance in the circuit are equivalent. The current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor, I5, and the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, V10. So let's simplify the circuit. Okay, this is I5 here, the, the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. And V10 is the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, so it's this one over here. Okay, now let's find our equivalent. Well, we start by noticing 5 and 15 are in parallel, so we can replace those two with 1. And the equivalent of them is going to be in series with 20. So let's start there because we cannot simplify or we cannot really work with the other resistors. So we start saying 15 is in parallel with 5 and then we, the equivalent is going to be in series with 20. 15 in parallel with 5 is 3.75 and we have 20 and we get 23.75 ohms. So that's the total resistance that we get when we replace 15 and 5 in parallel and 20 in series. So let's redraw the circuit with this new equivalent resistance. So we have the 20 volt source, the 3 ohm resistor here. Then we have the 10 ohm resistor. And now we can include the equivalent resistance we just calculated, 23.75. Now this circuit looks very very similar to the one we have to the one we had in the previous example. We have the 23.75 ohm in parallel with 10. So we have 23.75 in parallel with 10. And the result is going to be in series with 3. The parallel combination is equivalent to 7.03 ohms. So when we add 3, we get a total resistance of 10.03 ohms. So now we have just uh, a circuit with one source and one resistor. We have the 20 volt source. and the equivalent resistance with 10.03 ohms. And that's it. Now we're interested in finding I5, and that's the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor. How do we do that? Well, one way we can do this is let's find first the total 
current I. The same current I flowing here is the same one flowing here from the source. It is the same one flowing there in the original circuit. So we can find I with Ohm's law. This is going to be 20 divided by 10.03 and we get almost 2 amps, 1.99 amps. Okay, now let's go back to this circuit heap we have here. This current I splits into AI and AB. AB is the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor and AI is the one that is the current flowing through the 23.75 ohms. In this same AI is the one flowing there entering the parallel combination of 5 and 15. <clears throat> so we can find AI applying the current divider principle because we know the total I we multiply by 10 and divide by the summation of the two. And we get 0.59 amps. We can apply Kirchhoff uh, current law if, if we want to find AB which is going to be useful for part C of this example. So we can find IB just by subtracting AI from I. So we have the total current I minus IA and we get 1.4 amps flowing there through the 10 ohm resistor. That is AI. There we have AB flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. But we're looking for I5. So I'm going to find I5 now. It's applying the current divider principle again. But now the total current is IA. So we take IA is the, is the one entering the combination of 5 and 15. We multiply now by 15 and divide by the summation of the two and we get 0.44 amps so the current divider principle in this example makes our life easier because we don't have to calculate voltages to apply Ohm's law to each resistor we can just apply the current divider now for V10 it's easy that's the volts across the 10 ohm resistor and we can easily find it because we already know IB, which is the current falling through the 10 ohm resistor. So we just multiply the total current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor, IB times 10, and we get 14 volts.